One early morning, Gordon awoke with a start. He felt strange, but could not explain why. His driver, who had come to clean him before work, began to reassure him. It's the ditch wire, he said to Gordon. It can get into your mechanical workings and make you feel sick. Gordon was satisfied with that explanation, but what was odd was that he couldn't remember falling into the ditch. Even though it had recently happened, the memory was fuzzy at best. I'm just exhausted from pulling the express so well, he chuckled to himself, and he fell back into an uneasy sleep. He dreamt of vague images, those of a mine and of darkness below. In these images, he felt apart from himself, as if viewing the events from above. He couldn't see anything clearly, but he felt strongly that these memories didn't belong to him. Later that morning, Gordon sleepily brought his train to the junction. Thomas, who looked equally tired, greeted him with a smile. Long night, Thomas asked. Yes, I had some very strange dreams, Gordon replied. Me too. It was like we were all back at the mine again. But when I woke, I couldn't actually remember there being at all. Gordon's eyes widened. I had the same dream. Come to think of it, I couldn't remember falling into the ditch, much less rescuing you from the mine. What does it mean? Thomas asked. I don't know. We only just came back. I remember you going to the yard just before the queen came to the island. I remember that too, but why can't we remember actually being at the mine? The two engines decided to find out for themselves. Later that night, the two of them puffed up the line which led to from the big station. They rounded the bend that led to the mines, but were met with cautionary signs which read, Danger, Collapse Mine Ahead. We'll have to investigate from here, said their crews. They walked past the signs and towards the collapsed mine shafts. They came back a short while later. What are you doing back so soon? Thomas asked. Nothing to see here. Let's head back. Thomas and Gordon didn't believe them. You didn't even take a light with you. How can you see anything? Their crews insisted, but Thomas resisted. He sped through the cautionary signs and stopped at the edge of the large gaping pit. When he looked down inside, he shrieked. G -g -g Gordon? Thomas called, tears welling in his eyes. In the pit were two mangled engines. One looked exactly like Gordon, and the other like Thomas. Who, who, who are these engines? Gordon asked. A terrible feeling began stewing deep in his boiler. I can explain, said a familiar voice. Sir Topham Hatt stood right next to his car, a light in his hand. I had hoped this day would never come, but alas, here we are. These were you, he continued solemnly. What do you mean, were? asked Thomas, distressed in his voice. Silly old board, silly old board. Come on! Right. Now, when you fell into that mine, Thomas, you didn't just fall. The mine collapsed beneath you, swallowing you whole. We tried bringing Gordon, our strongest engine at the time, to lift you out with a pulley system. But we misjudged on how hollow the shaft was below and he too fell into the growing chasm beneath the ground. But how can we be here, if we're down there? Gorn asked. It's a gruesome tale, said Sir Topham Hatt. We had a major scandal due to our lack of judgment, and to save face, we saved your faces. There was a talented engineer from Crewe 
who move your identities into new shells. The engines you see below your former selves were prototypes. Thomas and Gordon didn't know what to say and, and in their confusion they began to cry. But that doesn't change on who you two are now, Sir Topham Hatt said. You're still two of my most useful engines. We gave you a second chance. And avoided a scandal. We understand, Thomas said in a derisive tone. Soon after, the two engines slunk home, buffer to buffer. Everything felt familiar and foreign at the same time. They didn't feel whole anymore, knowing that a part of them was rotting away in the bowels of the mines. They only hoped that one day, many years from now, these memories would become fuzzy too.